Murphy, and you're back with us, and look who you brought with you. The Boondock Saints are all in studio today. How you guys doing? Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what a long, long uh, trip this has been for all you guys, man. True. To uh, have this film that came out in, what, 99? Came out in 2000. 2000. <clears throat> and, uh, of course, didn't get um, released to a lot of theaters. One of those films should have been bigger, wasn't. Then suddenly the DVDs is all starts to pop. And the, the film has never gone away. The Boondock Saints says, is, always gets talked about online. And everybody's been waiting for the next one. You guys were able to do it again. That is correct, sir. Yeah. Oh uh, well, why don't we start from here? Uh, let me start with the, uh, with of course, um, jump right in with Sean and Norman. What was it like for you guys? Y you popped these roles that everybody thought uh, they loved, but it took a while for for people to see this. <laughs> I mean, they're pretty fairly even iconic roles, I would imagine, in your uh, in your own career. But how long before you guys found out that you were in a cult movie? Uh, you know, I, I mean, you don't, you never do a movie expecting it to be a cult uh, hit because mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, we if we knew the recipe to make that happen, we'd all be doing it. Um, you know, we just made a good movie. You know, I read a script that I thought was a killer script, so I wanted to do it. A bunch of actors in Hollywood wanted to do it. Certainly, bigger actors than me wanted to do it. And uh, for whatever reason, Troy liked me, let me do it, and uh, you know, I think we made a good movie. And the mm. fact that it didn't get released, it's, you know, I, I, you never know the rhyme or reason behind somebody's marketing plan. And, you know, luckily enough, fans plugged into it, saw a movie that they really dug, and turned a friend on to it. And then that friend turned three friends on, and it just kind of happened. And I'm proud as hell to be a part of it, you know? Yeah, I remember the first time I sort of noticed that it was becoming a thingy. Uh, I was walking with my son Mingus in Venice, and all these skater kids had, a, had on a sweatshirts with our faces on it and my little boy walks over to one of the skater kids and punches him in the stomach and goes <laughs> why is my daddy on your shirt <laughs> and then I, just, I started noticing the sweatshirts every yeah. day, you know uh and really you know for the roles that you guys that, that troy wrote for you guys and directed these had everything that i think that you want to get as an actor you had style there was humor to it and you know gigantic action so the initial thing of it's not getting released must have been uh, a little heartbreaking for both of you. Because you, you must have felt like you nailed those roles right off the bat. I, I think, I mean, at least for me, I, I, I felt bad for Troy. I mean, Troy fought to put me in the film and, and Sean, and it really worked with us in the making of the film. And, I mean, it's his it's his baby, you know, it's his mm -hmm. characters. He wrote it, he breathes it, you know. I tell the story of... of in the courtroom in the first one, you know, instead of yelling action, he slams his hand on the table and goes, you deliver these people. Mm -hmm. just, that sort of infectious attitude was just, you know, it, I, I felt I felt worse for, for Troy at that moment. Uh, and let's go to Billy Connolly, who uh, your career, uh, of course, uh, here and in Europe, ha there's been so many things that worked for you over the course of your career. Sure. And in so many different ways. Mm. Uh, and one of the things that I always found interesting was Troy booking a comedian into a role that was, you know, a kick-ass motherfucker role. You had to be afraid when this guy showed up that he was going to destroy. But to do that with a comedian... It could have backfired, I guess, a little bit. Let's face it, if Robin Williams would have shown up in that, yeah. it might have but got a giant laugh. That, because any time I see Robin, and I prefer Robin, the darker he gets, yeah. the, the more I like it. Yeah. I think comedians do dark really well. You know, in history, they've done it really well. But I was, I was just grateful to be offered such a dark, dark role, and I told him instantly, I met him, told Troy, we met in a bar to do the interview, <laughs> and, I, and I don't drink, I'm a little victim. And, uh, <laughs> And I said, look, I've always wanted to be a really badass guy. I want to be a real baddie, you know. And I, the badder, the better. If we, the more people we kill, the happier I'll become. Yeah. And he thought he found it very funny, and he took me very seriously from day one, for which I will be eternally grateful. <laughs> but most of my roles have been serious. Yeah. Most of my film roles, and, and they and I don't like most comedies that I see on film. You know, that I see some that I absolutely love. You know, like Hangover and. Something about Mary and stuff I, I didn't have me on my hands and knees. But most comedies leave me a bit cold. Well, this is the interesting thing that, that Troy's done with uh, both the films, 
is that there's a comedic edge to, to certain characters. But when you normally get together and, and laugh hard at movies with your buddies, it's not normally comedy. It's more stuff like Goodfellas. You know, it's more Absolutely. stuff like black comedy. I couldn't make it you know? more. Yeah. Uh, so there has to be some level of reality, I think, to make it actually funny and not, you know, the typical, you know, silly comedies. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And, and on the film, it was fun. Yeah. You know, it was, we were always laughing. If, if you ever visited our set, there was people just roaring with laughter all the time and then into it, you know. It was, and, and there was a lot of fun. And, and the new movie, the sequel, is, is it doesn't take itself quite as seriously as the last one. It's, 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 it's got a lighter edge to the fun. It's, it's much, much... More dependent on Why them. was that, Trey? Why did you decide to uh, bring up even some of the comedic levels a little more? We tried to push everything harder. Mm -hmm. You know, like one of the things uh, that I found, uh, one of the first reactions we were getting on the internet before any fan saw anything, our first screening was last night in Boston. Uh, so 400 people have seen it uh, to, as, we, as we sit here. But their first reaction was, it'll probably suck. But I'm going to see it anyway. Right. And we have this sort of healthy mistrust of sequels, <laughs> well earned in my opinion, in uh, in in the U.S. And uh, one of the things we wanted to do was uh, give give them everything they loved about the first movie. The three B's though: bigger, better, better. Mm. So we push comedy, we push the action, higher body count. Uh, the whole movie, the the story is much deeper. And the the second thing we do is is that we try to throw a curveball at the fan base, a, a new story that they couldn't have possibly seen coming. Julie Benz is a curveball. Clifton yeah. Collins going into Il Duce's history and how he became a killer into period piece flashback. These yeah, it's a little. That, it's, it gets like a little Godfather too. There at certain sure. points where we're going back and forth yeah, between sure. the uh, past and present. Day. Well, that's the way. I think that's how you crack the code on us on on making a good sequel. I mean, mm -hmm. Terminator Two, right? Suddenly Arnold's the good guy protecting him. We ate that up. We loved it. Sure. And the filmmakers showed some brevity there, you know, and didn't <laughs> just rest on their laurels. And, and do the same thing they did in the first film. They did something cool and new. And that's what we try to do with Boondock 2. I'd also like to say, fuck. Because we are, <laughs> uh, we've done so many radio things and you can't swear. Yeah, they say, fuck. Yeah. They say constantly. <sighs> Fuckity, fuck, fuck, fuck. Oh, God, that feels good. <laughs> well, we're always catching ourselves. We're like, yeah. that freaking sucks. Uh, for you, though, man. Um, it's it's interesting because you sat so many years before, and last time I don't imagine that you were writing for an audience, and this time you had to be writing because you knew who your fan base was. So mm. that's got to change just the way that you start to write and direct this, right? Yeah. Not only do we do we know who our fan base is, this this fan base frame fucks this movie into the ground. They know every single yeah. every single line, them. you know. <laughs> they made the movie. He, sure, he paid a he lot of attention it. to the he romantic it. angle as we well. They made yeah. it. So well, it's it's very prominent and strong in this one. So every oh, fuck yourself, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just seeing if anybody's paying attention, man. You guys are falling asleep. There's a lot of running through dry ice. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just the wind coming up, wind machines. Uh, you guys have been staying in, in touch with each other over the last uh, yeah, several years, sure. saying, can we? I know you've had legal problems with this, but... Um, it, was there at any time that, that any of you guys thought we're not going to be able to do it again or we'll just suddenly lose the attention that people have given us? Or? I must say, I never thought that for a second. Yeah. I think yeah. I'm, the, I'm the, the most optimistic of everybody. Yeah, this motherfucker. Yeah. He was the only one that actually pegged it. When we didn't get a theatrical release the first time around, me, Norman, and Sean are crying into our beers. Billy's like, doesn't matter. Fuck it. <laughs> uh, the kids will find it. It's rock and roll, man. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> you know? And we're like, and you, yeah. so you know, sometimes you know. Sometimes it's, it's how it feels, how it looks. It, it was just so stylish. 
and and the, the, the language was so different. The, the, yeah. It had taken it up a notch. It wasn't just a lot of people shouting motherfucker and shooting each other. Right. You know, there was a good language in it, and the story was strong and good. And you, it just had too much going for it, too much style to just die. Well, yeah. I knew it would catch on. And, and, of course, like, with your career... Unlike these guys, you've hammered out some really strange things between music and stand-up. I've been in some crap in my <laughs> yeah, life. <right. laughs> there's, there's no reason you should even be sitting upright today. <laughs> so every day above ground has got to be you've a good day for my you. Mail. Yeah, sure. Uh, but yeah, there were things in the first movie that. Uh, I mean, honestly, probably even critics missed. I don't think Catholic mysticism has ever been used like this before in the film. That you're watching these guys and you're like, well, are they just religious boys or are they actually protected? And you don't really give that away to us. We don't know whether they're superstitious or it's supernatural. Yeah, those kinds of things, man, that's, that's, uh, that's a great device for a filmmaker to use, as far as I'm concerned. First 15 minutes of Boondock 1, I wanted you to fall in love with the boys. I wanted you to think that yeah, I'd like to have beers with guys like this. I wanted you to like them so that when they went and did what they did, controversial though it may be, you're torn about it. You already mm -hmm. like them. You know, so the, you get to you get to explore those own is your th th those issues on your own as the viewer. Come to your own decisions or not. You know, doing things that are so cut and dry and spoon feeding the audience a one sided thing to me it's just not as interesting as doing it. You know, the way where they get to think for themselves. Uh, you had that, and then the way, of course, with Defoe as the detective coming back, uh, explaining, and then suddenly the scene goes on around him. I mean, that was outright shocking the first time to see that. It, that hadn't been done before in film. Sure. I mean, it was just an, a more interesting way to tell a story, too. Again, I, I, I sometimes it's just a, a, a cooler way to do it, man. Mm -hmm. You can show up on a crime scene and, uh, you know, it's, you, you, can, you can watch the guys do the murder and then have the cop. You can tell it linearly, uh, but it's far more interesting to me and far more visual to do it the other way. It's a you know? better mousetrap. Yep, yeah. better mousetrap. There you go. But so we kind of had that, we, we developed that style of showing up at a crime scene and having them decipher what happened, flashing back to actual events, which, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the lack of professionalism, we'll say, of the brothers always gets them out by the hair of their ass. Sure. You know, and it doesn't always go clean, but you're not dealing with the criminal mind at that point, so the cops, there's a big disconnect there. To me, all those things that maybe Hollywood would look at and go, that's could be confusing. I can't tell you how many people were like, "Is is is Smecker in the scene, or is he like a ghost, or is he walking around?" I, it, it, we had to actually film stuff mm -hmm. in order sometimes for the powers that be to get it. They finally, you know, saw it and went, "Oh, okay, and now I get what you're talking about." I actually have no hair on my ass. As 400 people, <laughs> as yeah, we sit here, it's perfect, perfect hairless ass. I missed the big tattooed lesbian, though. By the way, that's, oh, that's sure. the only thing I missed last night. I want a big tattooed lesbian from the abattoir. I want it back again. Uh, for you guys, when you're when you're getting scenes like this that haven't been done in the 60, 70 years of film that haven't been shot this way, and then it's a first time director and writer. I mean, how long before you guys could say, all right, we trust them to go with some of this day stuff? Day one with me. Yeah? Yeah, day one for me as well. And, and the first one was one of my first movies, and I trusted him wholeheartedly. So going into the second one, I knew, I knew we were golden. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we didn't know shit at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> that was but awesome. Looked, but you looked as if you did know shit. <laughs> I totally try to yeah. fake people out, you know? It was good. You, it you was... don't know what you're doing. Just try to make like you do. Yeah, well, that's, I think that's the whole cheese for me. You know, just straight about as if you know what you're doing. Something will happen between you, between you and the light and cameraman and the actors that you've chosen. Something's going to happen. At the end of the day, you know, I mean, the, the fact that there's a second one of these being made says he did some stuff right. Absolutely. And quite We're the frankly, same people. A, a lot of stuff right, you know. And yeah. yeah. And like Billy just said, for the sequel, everybody came back. Not just the cast, the crew. And it wasn't like a negotiable thing. It was like, hey, let's do it too. Tell me when, where. It was just like that. You know, the first one gave me a boner. The second one gave my boner a boner. <laughs> so it was a double boner for you. Yeah. Boner. Yeah. First yeah. time again. More yeah. cinematic. So a like dual bone for my cat. Come and sit over there. Uh, 
<laughs> I'm <laughs> just <laughs> sure. Yeah, you're going to watch out for the double boner. <laughs> double He's going to watch out because the saints come to town and one of them wreaks havoc and the other one's queer. <laughs> what, mom? What's wrong? Probably looking for nobody else. <laughs> it, it just rips me a new one everywhere we go. <laughs> me as well. It's like it this every day, though. Me oh. every day. Everywhere we go. By the way, on your radio show, we'd like to make a new word happen, if mm -hmm. we can. homo -queercicle. Or homo queer Homo queer Homo queer is what I'm feeling the case. <laughs> homo queer <-sicle. laughs> um, So there, uh, the interesting thing too about the film, it came out at a at a tough time in terms of violence with uh, Columbine uh, right. coming out. And even in this new film, and uh, you've already told me, don't give away a single tiny plot point. But you do, I think. I think it's okay to say that you kind of turn things against uh, a soft type of America. Uh, there's a certain sp speech <laughs> yeah. that the boys get into. Yes, we'll call that the manifesto. Yeah. Emphasis on man. <laughs> uh, wh what was the feeling there to kind of break that off in the middle of the film? That That's my favorite memory of the film, and, and it, it's, it's getting up there. It's probably my favorite scene in the film because me... Uh, Sean, Norm, and Rocco wrote it together right minutes before we shot. Mm -hmm. All that entire thing. We were writing all day and shooting in three different locations to get the, the scene that you're talking about, the manifesto scene. And it evolved into what you saw. It was nothing. It was, it was a blank page at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And we shot it all in one day. We, we were, it was big set moves to, from one place to another. And we wrote it as we went. And it just, it just gave birth right there. And it felt right. And then when we dropped it into the flick, boom, done, man. The stellar epicness was overwhelming. Yes. <laughs> did, it, did it feel like it was aimed at some of the critics who, not just of your film, but of these types of film no uh mm -hmm. like you America. said i think you had it right at the yeah. soft america i yeah. think that uh, one of the appeals of boondock like i, I was uh, i always ask women there's we've got a 50 50 male female fan base which is amazing to me because it's such a male just a cock driven movie yeah but dude there's right. still chicks out that they want dudes to be dudes man that's, that's exactly got their nuts sliced off the <laughs> emasculation of men is just like appalling today what? exactly yeah, it's, just, this it's is, stupid yeah. i dig what chicks and god bless the fact that they're this. different than dudes <laughs> yeah <laughs> Texas. <laughs> I know, but I think that I, I think that that's <laughs> that's the fucking appeal, man. Mm -hmm. The women so are sta it's gone so steaks. far. Like we're staying here it's in New York so at the W. I like to call it the George. The George. <laughs> <laughs> I think people want John Wayne back secretly. You know, uh, I think that there, there's been a, such a dearth of sense of sense of fucking activity uh, in America that, pe that that there's women out there that want a real man. There's people that do not ask for permission, don't care what you think of them, do what they believe in. These types of things are American ideals, and it's almost been lost in this sea of sensitive bullshit. Uh, and that's one of the appeals about both movies for me as a viewer is to see people not asking permission, standing up, doing what they think is right, and go fuck yourself if you don't agree with it. Man, I just on the news the other day. There was this, this uh, old guy, I think it was in Chicago, on closed circuit camera, it was caught. And uh, it, was, it was actually a few months ago. And this old man walks across the street, gets clipped by a car, and falls down. And on the goddamn closed circuit cameras, all these people are looking into the street for, I think, 11, 12 minutes before a co fucking cop showed up and helped the dude. Everybody's just like looking like, oh, what's going on out there? It's just, it's <laughs> ridiculous, man. It's absolutely ridiculous. But I think it's because people don't know what to do. It's not that they don't want to do anything. Yeah, but they don't know what to do. And people come along in 9-11 and do what they did. People just don't know what to do. And so when they see a film with guys in it who know what to do, it <laughs> gives them a certain a release. Yeah. But even, a even, even if you don't know exactly what to do, do something. Well, take action yeah. somehow. It's what you said about what you want in a director. Show up, take over, but when we keep huddling all the time, we'll keep talking yeah, about Yeah, if you keep having what committee meetings. Yeah. Right. What should we do? Yeah, Troy's a director that, you know, like, like he said, he said she opened and delivered these guys. Troy's a director that goes, these motherfuckers killed people, you get in there and you fucking sort shit out. And then you have directors that are like, this bins, <laughs> gather round and let's discuss your inner workings hitherto yeah. for most. Yeah, it's like, come on, man. Get so. me my ascot and my beret and yes. let the arting begin. <laughs> <laughs> I have a weakness for opera cape and cigarette holder myself. Well, <laughs> 
<laughs> no, for a kid. You've got Never the perfect hair well. for it. You can wear that anywhere. <laughs> That's oh, what I swish. Should. I swish. I'm <laughs> currently swished into the room. He's windswept and interesting. Windswept and interesting. <laughs> Um, awesome. <laughs> awesome. 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 The, uh, you know, we, we left off, and uh, again, I'm trying not to give much away, but we left off at one point where you're wondering where the guys go, and you've picked it up that they've kind of been on ice mm -hmm. uh, for a while. Why did you do that with them as opposed to having it, you know, grown off camera? You know, the vigilante aspect well, or the... That was just a, that was sort of a, a happy coincidence. Eight years had gone by, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I f we had to make up for the time, right. you know, because uh, it needed to take place. To say, so I needed an explanation. But the second one, which was I was hoping that at least some time would go by, was because I wanted the world to sort of need them again. You mm -hmm. know, I wanted them to and I also wanted them to be in a place where they were getting itchy and antsy and that maybe, you know, again, we're doing it in that ambiguous way. Maybe they're being called back into action by God mm -hmm. or maybe it's their own selfish desires to protect their 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 names, you know, that they that they get out and do. You don't know. You don't know why they're pulled in at exactly. any point. But I wanted the I wanted the world to to need them, and I wanted them to be antsy to get out there and get going again. You know. And you guys were already antsy to play these characters for a long time again. Yeah, uh, I mean, it was a killer role. So I mean, I, I was I was ready at the drop of a hat. You know. I do ten of these. Yeah. yeah. Oh, would you ready? Uh, would everybody be up to the fact as if the audience shows back up for these that you would make it every several years? If, or? if, if, if people want one, I'd I'd be happy to. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I would be more than happy. Yeah, yeah, I think absolutely. I would delay to do it. There's no mistake. We all hung in together. I've never done it with anybody from any other movies. Right. Like you I was know? telling Norman earlier, my favorite film to make was Boondock 2. My second favorite film to make was Boondock 1. <laughs> yeah. And third place is down by a considerable margin. <laughs> and why is that? Because you guys have made a hell of a lot of films. You've yeah, but you know what I mean? I mean, occasionally you do a film where, you know, somebody won't come out of their trailer because, like, some shit's wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. and, you know, the, 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 there's cheese Can you imagine, like, all of my sandwiches just grab somebody, just yeah, yeah. them out. <laughs> yeah. I've yeah. happened on this set. Yeah. Billy, Sean, and Norm be bang. Get out of your fucking trailer. <laughs> I'm really worried Sean's going to start shooting people for real. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's taking this on as religion. Now, Dude, seriously, do the safety He'll be zone. in the car and he'll <laughs> be like, yeah, 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 you're good. I'm the, I'm the one you got to worry about. Oh, oh, we know that. Let me tell you. Yeah. We know when that I coming I put in. that jacket on with a six guy. My personality changed completely. What? I took a special crew in to hold me down. Mm -hmm. And I again, killed the crew. The beauty of that is, is like when you see the design of that, it you could have been, you know, they could have laughed at you for it instead of went, that's the most badass thing, thing. I've seen yeah. in a movie. Yeah. So, so many times in what you guys did in the first movie that paid off so that you could do a second, uh, all that stuff could have exploded in your face is what I kind of love about the first movie that while you're watching it, you're like, I wonder if this is going to hold up. I wonder if they can keep this going to the end of the film. And it seems like you just got over what so many people try to do in comic book movies yeah. where you just suspend that belief you guys were able to do. No guts, no glory, man. Yeah. You know, if you don't think you're cool. Nobody else is going to think you're fucking cool, man. You know, it's, it's rare that some dude, you know, thinks, has an idea, makes a script and says, you know, me and everybody I know would love to see this film. Instead, most, most people are like, I think those people would like to see it. Right. They may not plug into it. It's like everybody's, everybody's creating greyhounds. Nobody's creating the rabbit. You know, mm. I think he went out and he designed a rabbit, you know, instead of like, it's like TV. It's like some, That's some, very profound. That thank is. you, brother. That I'm was awesome, I'm deeply dude. moved. I'm yeah. so <laughs> close to He's still moving. He's still going. I think I wet myself a wee bit there. I think I had a wee leak. <laughs> we leave. Don't let him, <laughs> Billy. Don't let him see you cry. These he men will turn on you in a heartbeat. They, they despise weakness. If I sense weakness, man, I'll tell you. <laughs> Flair is the kind of douchebag. We're, we're in the car driving. He'll be like, "Stop the fucking car!" If he sees anything, like this one time when there was a flag that was like tattered mm. on the side of the. This is some guy holding. Motherfucker up a was holding a shredded American flag. I'm a patriot. I'm a goddamn patriot. <laughs> that shit seriously pisses me off. Like, Stop the car. I'm like, it's fine, Sean. It's a costume. <laughs> Some douche is gonna like shred the flag and desecrate it. No, I, I, I'm not down with it. Not on my watch, man. man. I'm not down with that. The guy's a homoquistical. He's a homoquistical. <laughs> he needs to be. Ready.
like you wouldn't. Don't it's, stop the car. Just stop a the fucking car. Going, like relax. You say relax. <laughs> I remember seeing Leonard Skinner in, in Scotland firing the roadie for letting the flag touch the floor. Behave. And it was a competitive <laughs> That roadie should have been canned. Yeah. That was in the, in the Ronnie Van Zandt days. Yeah. The real Leonard Skinner. Right. Not the guys that are still touring. I mean, they're 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 good enough, the, the mm -hmm. new guys. But this was the original. Yeah, they probably threw the guy a beating the crash, too. You know. <laughs> oh, let the flag hit the floor. Come home. on back here. Yeah. Let the flag touch the floor in the Apollo Glasgow. I mean, behave yourself, for God's sake. <laughs> You're not even in America. It's okay. Troy, uh, about making this film for your friends and and saying it's the kind of film me and my buddies want to see. Is that because you hadn't been in Hollywood long enough? To understand that you're supposed to make a film marketed at an audience, we did. You, we're almost naive about. I want to see something cool myself. No, because I haven't. I still haven't let that affect me. I know all that mm -hmm. stuff now. You know, I know about demographics and making uh, you know movies to exploit certain age groups and stuff like that. It doesn't matter to me. My 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 philosophy is a lot simpler. Mm -hmm. you make a good movie they'll come you know if you make it they will come uh, <laughs> that's and that's, that's all you gotta do though. on top of that boondocks demographic is said to be between 15 and 35 year old males and females I've talked to 60 70 year old husband and wife teams that like this movie for the same damn reasons that people within the demographic do mm. I know entire families that sit down and watch this thing together which is kind of fucking crazy <laughs> now that I think about it's it <laughs> But it's like, I don't know, it just, you make something good, that's all you got to do as far as I'm concerned. The, 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 and I don't need demographics and test audiences to tell me when, you know, a movie's good or not. Well, let me ask the fellas this, because, uh, you know, not only did the, the movie got tough uh, and how long it took to be released, but Troy took some heat out of, you know, from a certain part of whether it was the critics or off of that documentary and all, where we were all supposed to believe this is a guy that, you know, blew his shot or whatever, and yet you guys all stuck with him. Uh, what made that happen? Well, first of all, it's well, not just us. I mean, yeah. the entire cast, Everyone the entire crew yeah. came back. Right. So, I mean, we, we, you know, if you look at this documentary, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's just like, you know, the, 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 the worth of any nation is how many people trying to get out and how many people trying to get in. Same mm -hmm. thing with this film. Every motherfucker said yes with one phone call. There was no negotiation. He didn't call my agent. He called me. I said, dude, say when. Same yeah. thing with Norm. Same thing with everybody. Same thing with every crew member. My makeup, hair, same. Yeah, and, and happy to be back. They, yeah. And you have enough footage. I've said this before. You have enough footage of Santa Claus you can edit it to make him look like an asshole. You right. know what I mean? It's like it, it was so one-sided. Well, not Santa Claus, probably. <laughs> but yeah, he's actually a good guy. <laughs> not trash it's Santa the same Claus. Way you... two, two things. Oh, exactly. Flag it was, Santa. Was, not... it was The film was an act of disloyalty. Yeah. I'll tell you another thing that angers me. <clears throat> those guys came to do one of those the making of movies and then turned it against the movie. Right. But they didn't ask anyone who was in it. They didn't, I, I'm in it. But right. they, they didn't come up and say to me, look, I've turned it into a hatchet piece. How does that stand with you? Do you want to be in it? Do you want to be out? I wouldn't want to be in it, but they never asked me. They just went ahead. I mean, don't you think if there was any validity to it, there'd be one of us going, yeah, man, Doug right. is a screw loose. There's nobody on that film well, yeah, no. even that, 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 can, that can subscribe to what they're trying to shove down your throat. You know, even at the same time, I've never heard anybody say, you know, James Cameron is an easy guy to get along with. But what's you, wrong with having a screw you, loose all of a sudden? Exactly. <laughs> what is wrong with being the guy who could push through all these things? You know, Troy doesn't suffer fools gladly, neither do I. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody does something wrong, I expect I expect somebody to be made aware of that. <laughs> the, world, the flag you know, has to be perfect. perfect. Yeah. 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 The flag right, right, has right. to be perfect. And Santa. Don't forget the claws, <laughs> man. Advances are made by people with screws loose. Sure. Yeah. That's what keeps the world rolling merrily forward, you know? Mm. But uh, the, have That's that. That's why Al Gore invented the internet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the internet. The interwebs. But, the you interwebs. Know, I, I also thought for you, I would have expected you even to run with that more because you did. There's somewhat of a Terry Malick thing about this where you've been quiet. And I think that, you know, you're, you're great in here during an interview. I think you'd be great TV. I'm sure a lot of people would have you on. Why did you feel like you wanted to pull back uh, and maybe not? put your personality out there 
there what, like the second time around? No, even before that, during the time off when you were waiting and in these lawsuits and stuff, I'm sure that you would have been welcome on TV and uh-huh. in newspapers. It just seemed like we didn't oh, hear much yeah, from that you. Was actually, yeah, that was actually, you know, when that documentary came out, I called up Billy and asked him for advice, and he said, don't see it, don't watch it. Yeah. That way you end the conversation. So I didn't watch it for years, but I've seen it since because... Uh, yeah, because they wanted his contribution. And I said, because they need your contribution now. Yeah. Right. Because it's, it's, it's run as far as it can with its own legs. Now it needs your input. Right. Don't. There was a, I, I did watch it uh, about a year and a half ago because we were involved in this lawsuit and they were, they were going to use, try to use the documentary to uh, character assassinate me. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was instructed by my attorney because I was going to be deposed on this subject. I had to watch it, so I did. Uh, it is a compl- I mean, if you've ever been stabbed in the back by your friend, you know exactly how I feel. And <clears throat> at the end of the day, you're left with sort of this one salient fact. I didn't know anybody in Hollywood. There was no, like, producer daddy uh, mm-hmm. or anything like that. I was simply a bartender and a bouncer. I wrote a script, got a movie deal, a record deal for my band, lost them both. I resurrected them both with new companies, and then we went and made our film and our record on our terms. Now, that is a tall order by anybody's standards, especially for a newbie to the industry. Uh, And from watching that film, you simply have no idea how I did that. They just didn't show you that story. To me, that's the failing of it, beyond being angered for being misportrayed and, I believe, creatively edited. Um... That was the they they really f- to me failed as documentary filmmakers. They were supposed to tell that story. A lot of kids might have wanted to know how you do it. Every time I talk to young filmmakers, they want advice on how did you do it. I was just like you. I don't know anybody. I just have this ability that I like. I want to do this with my life. This is my you know. How did you do it? And those questions could have been answered, and they 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 simply weren't. So, now, have, have you do- let any documentary stuff go on during this film? Have you been shooting any stuff? Yeah, or? but I got that. I got that <laughs> shit tied down now, man. <laughs> I got my own little Memphis Mafia looking after that footage. Uh, <laughs> I saved my life away in the car. Away. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, yeah, I had a, 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 a friend of mine whom I trust implicitly uh, to do that. They're the worst. <laughs> yeah, they are. And uh, I also controlled the uh, the footage this time around. So um, another. Thing, another thing, another Norman Sean, you gotta watch. Yeah, <laughs> another thing you gotta, another thing you gotta understand is that that documentary was not my idea. I had nothing to do with it being made, except giving my friends the permission they requested. It was their idea. Mm-hmm. They came, wanted to do this. They wanted a piece of the pie. I hacked them off a nice slice, and they decided to screw me. Um, for whatever freaking reasons they have, uh, actually fucking reasons they have. Now that we're on serious, I get to swear. Uh, well, uh, the interesting thing is that the guy's coming back, the film, uh, you know, Boondock Saints 2 coming out, it seems like, as far as being the validation, it, it belongs to you on this one. It's got to feel good that even after all this time, people want to see. I mean, how many films get out there that's had waited that this long for... Yeah, you got to think. Some, I mean, how many films were even valid to do a sequel ten years right. later? You know, <laughs> everybody's like, "What? Well, I, I, I was ten years old when that movie came out." Um, but yeah, the, the, that's the strange thing about the Boondock fan base. Mm-hmm. It just keeps growing, and they don't forget it. These people multiple times buy this thing, give it away as gifts, spread the word on their own. This type of this type of thing is a very special type of success. And maybe we didn't get our red carpets and you know big ad campaigns that you always want you know you want your film to have a shot out there uh maybe we didn't get that we got something way better at the end of the day as far as i'm concerned i I mean when people come up to (laughs) in in hollywood it's like an it's like an infection when you're talking to somebody like i love your work you you never know whether you're being played this guy even knows your work you Mm -hmm. know boondock fans they come up to you they're like this scene and that scene they're reciting that you know you're dealing with somebody that loves what you did you know and i've seen kids steal the look. I've seen kids walking down the street dressed like I'm like, are you on the way? No, oh, I just dress this way. Okay, good. I never saw the film before. Uh, that's got to be kind of cool for you guys, though. It's I mean, cool, it's yeah. you know, James yeah, it's, Dean stuff. It's totally flattering. We yeah. see tattoos on people of us, and you know, Halloween costumes, and it's fun. Well, I'm uh, I'm glad to see y'all here. This is really really great to meet you, Troy. Cool. And I'm I'm uh, 
you know, I'm glad to see that you're still pushing at it. And all you fellas, I think it's uh, terrific that you stopped by today. All right, guys, <laughs> thanks so much for coming in. We'll see you next thank time. You, thank you, man. See you. Thank you, man. I can't say anything about it. Don't give out anything. Yeah, I know. I already signed it. Is homo queersicle a plot point? That seemed to be put out there quite a bit. I know you don't like that so much, but... I don't understand why it's so accepted. That it's just normal, fun conversation. If you were doing it about a religion or a race, it would be, you know, just horrendous. Hold on, what if the religion was Jewish or the, or the race was black? I think I see where you're be, going. It still would be funny. <laughs> All right, here's the thing, Fez. And he was actually just joking. And I forget which one that was. The guy who played Powder before. Sean Patrick Flannery. Sean Patrick Flannery. But I, you saw that he was joking around. He's just uh, having a lot of fun. And um, I don't think he meant it in an anti uh, way. I don't think it was anti gay at all. I think it was the way he was talking about real men in films. Well, you should come in and do the interview. And he's a me. real guy. You I should come in and do the interview. Come in. Uh, I'll show you a real guy and then just start punching him. <laughs> just start swinging wildly. I just let him expose himself. Who? Oh. Actually, when he said that, Fez has been even leaving the room lately uh, during the interviews. And as soon as he said that, I'm just like, I know I'm going to hear about it from Fez later. Uh, what's the big uh, deal in uh, Tennessee right now? Why do I keep saying this flop up? This is Jeff Fisher, coach of the Titans, um, did a charity event where he took off the shirt he was wearing and underneath, in a very wrestling-like move, he had a Peyton Manning jersey on underneath uh -huh. and appeared for the crowd in that jersey. Where was he? In Indianapolis? Um, I'm not sure where he was. It was a Tony Dungy charity. Not exactly mm -hmm. sure, but it was a t charity that was headed by Tony Dungy. So in a tribute to D Tony Dungy, he, he was wearing a Colts jersey. And other people in Tennessee are mad? Right, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're a rival. I didn't know they were rivals. Oh, yeah, in the AFC South. I didn't think they were fucking good enough to have rivals. <laughs> uh, would you be mad if this was your team? Um, when he said it was for charity, I would, no, nah, fuck him, fuck him. He shouldn't be doing that. He shouldn't be wearing that Dave, thing. Uh, Fez, is a funny joke? No, I would be pissed. The guy's hanging on by a thread as it is. Why, why show Maybe up another... Maybe that's why he's doing it. Like, whatever, <laughs> get rid of me. I'll go back and coach another team up. Maybe he wants to coach the Colts. That would be a, a good uh, move by him. I, he shouldn't be doing that. Not in the, maybe, like, you know, if it was a funny commercial or something, but not in front of those You think fans. you should get paid to do it? Yeah, I mean... It's do you just, think he was acting like a homo queer sickle? Uh, yeah. That I don't like a, that term. My favorite part of the interview was the homo queer sickle part. I know you didn't hear another thing after it. <laughs> my favorite part was lettuce wraps, lettuce wraps. <laughs> Oh, no, that was during a commercial. Yeah. <laughs> he shouldn't have done that, Jeff Fisher. No, uh, it, it goes back to um, what we were saying about letting a retarded kid on the field. Because he's doing it for charity, it's okay? Uh, Sean, you're on my fez. You're on my fez. I, I think the people in Tennessee have a problem with it because he was, one, wearing a Peyton Manning jersey and said, I just want to feel like a winner tonight. Yeah, I'd fire his ass. No <laughs> yeah. Kidding. No kidding, you're having a losing season. You lost by one of the worst scores of any pro team in history last weekend. Uh, you shouldn't even be out doing fucking charity gigs. Right, you know, here's the thing. Maybe the charity got money for him putting it on. They didn't get anything extra for him saying, I feel like a win. It's nice to feel like a winner. Either way. That's him rubbing it in. Either way, he could just, he could just, how about this, just donate money to the charity. How about this? Stop acting like it's such a fucking joke to you. <laughs> Stop <laughs> acting like it's a joke. Act like it's important. Well, I want to win. It's all about timing. If he did it last year when, you know, the Titans had the best record in the AFC. When they were 12-0. and 0. Pe People wouldn't have cared. But this year, it's totally different. The script I mean, has been flipped. I hate to say it. It's kind of a good point. If you were a winner, a couple people would bellyache. But... The fact that you stink so bad. And, I mean, it was a humiliating. What was that final last week? 59-0. Right, you got to get more than zero. 
And you got to give up less than 50. It's why I... I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, one team should not cover the over. I mean, you've done literally just about as bad as both team, both sides of the ball can be. Mm -hmm. You never even hear about people putting up 50s. And you had, they had to sit their quarterback in the third quarter. They were up so far ahead. That's fucking Sandlot ball. Mm -hmm. Identity guard, you want to protect yourself online. You want to protect your bank account, your credit cards, your online shopping. Do it the right way. Get identityguard.com. I have people get into my bank account. I got identity guard now. You do? Yep. I signed up for it. I got all my materials in the mail yesterday. I don't even know who you are right now. The way that you speak, you should be behind us completely. I was able to get identity guard. Nobody else knows me. That's how protected that, I am. This is very interesting. I've never seen you jump in and use something that a sponsor set up. Well, this is something totally that I need. I know what it's like to feel that helpless feeling of being exposed on the Internet. Um, and I, I think I need to do this, too. And I need to protect me from something kind of unique. What's that? Ex-wives and hungry kids. Identityguard.com. If you're going to do any... Uh, identity Guard. If you're go you're, they're going to send you notices for any sort of activity going on with your social security number, with your credit card numbers, with your bank account. You're going to be updated on what's going on. I also need somebody else's blood for when I do the blood test. <laughs> A lot of people online just waiting to steal personal information. They do? Yeah. That's wrong. They're just stalking the Internet. Identity thieves is what they are. They can get to personal information. You have to put it in if you want to do anything online. I guess there's no way to stop them. There is with uh, Identity Guard. Uh, Identity Guard. At IdentityGuard.com, that's where you sign up. It takes just 20 minutes to get all set up and ready to go. Why so long? Because you want to make sure that everything is being protected. Mm. And if something does, by some odd chance, go wrong and you lose money, I won't. Identity Guard is going to make sure you're reimbursed up to $1 million. That comes as part of the service with IdentityGuard.com. Wow. IdentityGuard.com. Start feeling safer and more confident immediately knowing PC World's Identity Protection Service has your back. Identity Guard. It's making it okay to trust again. Uh, Identity Guard. What if there's, like, uh, people are just, like, gossiping about you on the Internet? Will that help you then? I don't think they're going to send a notice on gossip. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, has anybody ever figured out, like, this little thing that Owen Air doing? It's almost like a clue. Have you noticed that bit? No. <laughs> no. Why, <laughs> why are you so nervous about well, it? Well, no, because it sounds so mysterious. It is. It's really good. It kind of freaked me out. Yeah. Even the I've way you said to, that was menacing. I've been trying to figure it out to see what they mean by it, if they mean what I think. But then I don't want to say on the air because I don't want to draw any attention to it. Oh, I know. I know one thing. Mm -hmm. Circulating. some uh, A rumor. Yeah. Piss it on over. <laughs> I will see what Eastside like. Dave has. This is why I need four pens. <laughs> Send it on. A bad vocabulary what you, is what, you, what we know so far. Me if I, v is that what the uh, clue you're talking about? Um, no, I don't think Opie ever fucked Big A, and that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write that. Well, that's going to narrow it down, at least. I didn't write that. This is very interesting. I thought that was maybe the clue, but I'm not sure. I thought your buddy Sam Roberts was supposed to give us gossip. <laughs> that was the rumor. And what? here's the thing. That's a lot bigger than my <laughs> yeah. rumor. Well, just say About that. Big A and Opie? <laughs> oh. um, yeah. <laughs> if they're not in tomorrow, we'll know that it's true. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's the only thing I'm worried about. Someone better be here. <laughs> <laughs> Call up Steve right now. <laughs> Steve. -a. So, Ron, you've been noticing, uh, you've been watching all these um, baseball games, right? Yes, I have, Dave. I've been watching baseball games. <laughs> have you games. noticed the baseball games? Have you heard me talking about them? Yeah. Have you, know, um, have you watched this uh, Taco Bell Blackjack commercial? Um, let me see it. This guy sounds 
exactly like Mikey Boy, our friend Mikey right, Boy. Egg, exactly. Close right, the it's, eyes. It's, Don't look at him. Next. Close the okay. eyes. So the eyes are closed. Black boots. Black pants. Not this guy. Black taco. Black dress. Black dog. Black taco. <laughs> Black eye. Black shit. Mikey Boy. Blackjack taco. 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 Jack now, you, if you take out that with pepper jack sauce, because Mikey would never get that flamboyant, yeah. the two ways he said black taco and he interrupts it is exactly <laughs> like Mikey Boy. Watch these commercials. You are paying way too much attention. <laughs> I just had to get that out there. So the commercial la, la, comes la, la, on, la, la. and you think Mikey Boy's in your house offering you a taco. I just heard get Mikey. It, get identity card. <laughs> Satellite of love. Oh, we had a winner today. And it's uh, the only person that got... Uh, that, see if you would have got the book today. Who were the guests on the Run Fest show today? Quickly. Uh, Clarence Clemens and the Boondock Saints. Wrong. you got to give out the guest names. Dave, who are they? Okay, Clarence Clemens, Sean Patrick Flannery, Troy Duffy, um, Billy Connolly, and... Oh, fuck, Howard... Uh, forgot the last guy's name. And Hicks, do you know? I I know Clarence. I know all but one. Who are they? Read them Clarence off. Clemens, uh, Norman Reedus, Billy Connolly, Norman Reedus. Go ahead. <laughs> Troy Duffy, Clarence Clemens. I don't have the author. Don Rio. Oh, there, Don you were Rio. Right. You're on the beyond.